we heard the representative of the occupying Israeli forces bashing you all, as he does with his, and his predecessors, perform a show and teaching us and lecturing us about humanity and morality, totally disconnected from reality. If he considers this assembly a circus, guess what? I consider him a clown performing in this place. If he thinks this place is a circus, why are you performing in it? Why are you still a member in it? The real test today is for those countries who preach and call others to respect international law and rule of law. So what will your position be now? The real test today is for those countries who preach and call others to stick to principles, respect the UN Charter, and to comply with the decisions of its organs and bodies. So what will your position be now? I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Libya. Mr. President, in the outset, uh, allow me to speak in English as I wish today to have my messages sent clear and not lost in translation. In the same time, I would like to align myself with the statements of the Arab group, the Islamic group, and the non-alignment movement. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here today to debate this resolution regarding the advisory opinion of the ICJ on the legal consequences arising from the unlawful occupation by the Israeli forces of the Palestinian territory, which Libya was proud to join its deliberations. This resolution presented by the delegation of the State of Palestine is by itself a historic moment, being the first action they take after getting their deserved, long-awaited privileges since the starting of this 29th year session. Unfortunately, they had to wait 79 years for that to happen. So in that regard, it's important to remind you that it's about time also to grant them the full membership of the United Nations. But while I'm standing here before you today, I find myself challenged and struggling to understand what are we exactly debating. Ordinary people watching us would question this because simply we are debating whether we should comply with the legal findings of the most prominent, prestigious international institution, the International Court of Justice. We are debating whether or not we should comply with international law. As much as this ICJ advisory is important and timely, but we should not at all neglect the fact that the occupation of the Palestinian territories has been and will remain unlawful. And none of you ever needed to wait all these decades for such advisory opinion to know that. But here we are. And the real test begins now. The real test today is for those countries who preach and call others to respect international law and rule of law. So what will your position be now? The real test today is for those countries who preach and call others to stick to principles, respect the UN Charter, and to comply with the decisions of its organs and bodies. So what will your position be now? The real test today is for those countries who watched the ongoing massacres and the genocide in Gaza for almost a year and witnessed the systematic destruction and dehumanization conducted by an apartheid regime for decades. So what will your position be now? On which side of history are you going to be on? What will the books of history say about you? What are you going to tell your people if you happen to vote against this resolution or even abstain? What excuse are you going to use to justify such decision if you can't vote for peace and justice and against occupation 
and illegal settlements. How you'll be able to ask for support if one day you're occupied? How will you explain if your government supports in any way such occupation in violation of international law and not hold those who do so accountable? And what will you say to those who will aim at you and say, welcome to the world of double standards? And talking about double standards, just a while ago, we heard the representative of the occupying Israeli forces bashing you all, as he does with his and his predecessors, perform a show and teaching us and lecturing us about humanity and morality, totally disconnected from reality. Even today, he couldn't bring any justification nor speak about the topic we're discussing, the illegal settlements. He could not address the resolution and trying to show that the world started only on October the 7th, neglecting the fact of history. Well, if he considers this assembly a circus, guess what? I consider him a clown performing in this place, always bringing his preps trying to produce a show, failing to make us laugh, deceiving us from reality. That's what they try to do, but they fail dramatically. So when I ask him if he thinks this place is a circus, why are you performing in it? Why are you still a member in it? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for you to show action and not words. Nearly a year will pass and the massacres and genocide in Gaza and the West Bank is continuing. The inability of the international community, especially the Security Council, to stop these atrocities and reach a ceasefire, and the silence of many of you, is what allowed the killing of tens of thousands, injuring hundreds of thousands, the displacement of almost two million, the spread of famine and diseases. So today, do some justice for those innocent and vote in favor of this resolution, which would be a message from the world to the occupying forces and who support them blindly. Say enough is enough and it's time to act. Libya reaffirms its position that it won't define resistance against occupation as terrorism. And who from your countries didn't gain their independence without resistance especially when the doors of peaceful solutions are completely shut down. Libya affirms its position that the only peaceful solution to this seven decades of aggression and occupation is by recognizing the Palestinians' right to defend themselves and resist occupation and the right of self-determination and having an independent state with Jerusalem, its capital. In conclusion, it's time now for all to comply and respect the outcome of the ICJ. This court, which we all know, has established or was established to help in ensuring peace and justice, where international law should prevail over the use of force. Therefore, we call on you all to vote in favor of this resolution to pave the road for peace. History will remember those countries who, which have taken a principle, a moral, a legal or humane stance, and it will also remember those who had their humanity in deep coma and were aware and deliberately participated in this live broadcasted atrocity, especially the 21st century Holocaust, the Holocaust of Gaza. Voting in favor of this resolution today is a vote for peace and it's a vote for justice. I thank you.